Okay, so today we're going to be working on a 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee and we're going to be doing a electric fan conversion. So this is where we're starting right now with the stock fan. I don't know if you can see it in there very well, but there's the stock fan and the studs right here. Are, I've already got most of them broke loose and this whole fan will just come off and then you're gonna work this radiator shroud right here you're just gonna kind of work it up after you loosen these bolts you get rid of them these nuts and work both of them carefully up so you don't damage your radiator okay so I have the stock fan out and the stock radiator fan out and I'm gonna show you kind of what's going on with it and what you'll need. You need an 11 wrench and a half inch wrench and I'll show you where and why. Okay, so you're looking at your engine bay and right here, I don't know if you can see that, but right where my light is, that's where your radiator shroud was. That one and this one on both sides of the radiator. See it? And right there. And down here, I put the nuts, the original nuts that came off when I took the fan off back onto the pulley to hold the pulley on. And now there's, as you can tell, no fan or no shroud anywhere. Just be careful when you're pulling out because I did Nick, I don't know if you can see it a little bit, but those few spots where I kind of touched it and didn't mean to. But there's also this piece right here. If you're looking at your engine bay, right there, that little, right here, this. That's hooked into your radiator shroud to keep this from moving around. That's your uh, transmission fluid cooler line. And you'll have to kind of tap right here on the fan whenever you might have to tap it with a screwdriver you know like put the edge of it on it of a long handled screwdriver and kind of tap the back of it with a wrench or something or a hammer to kind of knock it loose and then it'll come off and this hole right here on the radiator shroud right now it's upside down this would have been right side up you know if so that's where that that hole is. It'll be on your driver's side Where that little piece was that held the transmission fluid cooler line on So if you're looking at it from the engine bay side You'd be looking at it like this down into it and there's where it would be So that's pretty much how that comes out and I'm going to take my uh, I guess you'd call it the grill cover right here this piece right here off it's not hard it's a few screws there's one here there's one here one here and one there and I have most of them out so I'll just take this last one out <clears throat> and then It just comes forward, like so, and then up and out. Very simple. And you just can set it to the side. And now you have access to a lot more. And I may have to loosen these bolts when I do this, so I can pull the condenser forward and then slide the little zip tie pieces, because what I got was a Taurus fan. A, uh, from a like a 93 Ford Taurus and the shroud and everything fits just right I heard that from other deep guys and I went with it so it's just right here just out of a 93 Ford Taurus a little electric fan and the shroud fits just right and a, a switch interrupter it's like if you need to go to AutoZone and ask for one it'd be a cooling fan interrupter switch and that's what you would want to ask for and I'm doing that because there's a little probe that goes into the radiator fans and you can turn this dial 
well, I'll show you later on in the video, but there's a dial and you can turn it and right when it hits that temperature it'll turn on. When it drops down to us below that temperature it turns itself off rather than just having a switch that you always turn on because you might forget to turn it on or something that's always running and draining your battery. Yeah, that's Dave. But anyway, so that's where we're at so far and we're just going to kind of keep moving forward from there. Alright, so where we're at now is I had to trim down the radiator to fit in the shroud and or not the radiator, but the shroud and the fan to fit pretty close to the stock radiator shroud. So I mean if you come over here it's just kind of like you know what I mean? That's that's pretty pretty close to where I want it. You can just kind of justify how you want it yourself. And then I cut off all these pieces that were sticking way out here to make it sit flush. And then I put 3M tape right there so it's not going to be rubbing on the on the fins or anything too bad. And I'm going to drill a couple small holes and put these, these kind of zip tie deals where it goes through the fins of the radiator. And then I just put a cap on it and pull it tight and snip the back. And I'm going to have my AC condenser loose and I took the bottom holding bracket off. So that I could, all that's loose, so I can get those little zip tie pieces in there in the back behind it to hold it in place, and then I'll do my wiring. But if you want to check your fan when you get it from the junkyard, unless you get it new off eBay, it's from a, a 93 Ford Taurus or a Mercury or something similar. Make sure there's no bearing noise, see how quiet it is. It's a good thing. And then you need to check it before you take it. I checked this one, but I'll show you how. So, if you look in here where the batteries are, your blue is going to be your high speed. So, you touch it to the positive, touch this to the negative. And it runs like it should. So, that's doing its job, and that's how you test that. So, next. Like I said, I have this drill off. I have all this loose, and I took my sway bar <coughs> down. It's just four bolts here, and those two, and it'll come right down. Just let it hang. And then I took my uh, cross member for the radiator and everything that holds it up. Just these two bolts on each side, and then there will be another bolt on the back side where this uh, another mount will be. <coughs> And so now I'm going to install it, and then I'll show you after that. What was that? So it's been about a month or two that before I got moved to the next stage of things because I ended up moving and i just got a lot of progress done today so i'm going to kind of go over what i did or try to at least anyway so here's what i have going on so i have the jeep back together for the most part and basically what i have going on is how i have my my battery done i did the big while i was in here the big seven upgrade two gauge on both these and it came with these new battery terminals where i could you know, run everything on one side, never really have to, you know, disconnect any of this stuff. Just unbolt, put the next that I need on there, whatever it is. And if I never have to disconnect the back, if I do the front, you know, I kind of like these. I had, I like the ones I had, but these are, these are better, I think, for what I'm going to be using. These are what I was using. They're not bad, but, you know, and it's a mess in here. But. Anyway, so the electric fan is in. You can see that at all. And I might upgrade to a better fan and shroud eventually, but anyway. And then the 136 amp alternator, I did get that in down there from a Hemi. And see, so here's the, all the cables. I tried to make it semi run the routing, and bear with me, it's kind of hard to see all this, but I have the maxi fuse. 60 maxi fuse right there and what I did was I used 
the bracket from the cruise control cable that used to run right here into this bracket and I got rid of the cruise control because it didn't work anyway and I just got rid of everything for it. it's a rig anyway and then the maxi fuse down here on this lower part of the bracket and then it runs through there and everything and back up and I have my winch cables going back here and my light bar cables always you know they're all kind of just tucked in there neatly and the harness if you can see it's routed down through here and all the way and then I put my dial right there the thermo switch and this is your dial for the temperature and I bolted it right in this general area right in front of the battery and the Probably should have done this video before I put it all the way back together. But anyway, right at the front of the... Well, it's kind of hard to see. But there's a probe that I ran right in front near that this top radiator. That's just where I chose to route it. You could route it in a better place if you wanted to. But anyway, and then, uh, you know, another thing that I was going to say is when while you have all this apart, I had all this part to figure out where I wanted to route everything. These are prone for leaking. There's this... I don't know if you can see under this mesh tape that they use. See all that cracked white stuff down there? That. See how bad it's cracked over time? Well, that's what they use here in these corners to keep it from leaking on your Jeep. And I've had a few of these Jeeps where they leak, so I just go ahead and get it all off. And while I'm in there, I silicone up the cracks really good where there's that gap all the way down and all the way under it. And then I do the other side too. And you can see over in that corner right there. And I just kind of vacuumed all this and it's really dirty. It's been sitting for a while, but anyway. And then that's kind of what I've gotten done. I have everything back in. All this was all completely ripped out and taken apart. And uh, here's your old, the old, oh. Control cable right here, and my garage is a complete mess from moving. New 231 transfer case that's another project coming, but anyway, and some speakers that are going in. This is that cruise crew cable, and I said I just got rid of it, but uh, it's really about what I've done so far. And I did test it and it all works. I have the toggle switch side of the Jeep. So, and it works. And then the AC, you know, trinary switch and all that are, it's all ground. I don't know if you can see that right here. It's all ground controlled. I wish I had taken more pictures or, um, or videos, but I'll add the pictures when I did the harnesses and everything in there. See, there's two harnesses and I just kind of found a way to get them in there and ran everything nice and neat back and all this harnesses all this stuff's just routed where i want it to be routed nice and neat all through there and there all the grounds are right here on this one bolt with the fender they all meet at the same place and then i just built nice harnesses for it all and you can see the harness that runs to the fan right there so that where I had originally ran the probe for the thermostat switch, which is right there. It's like here's my battery, and then the radiator, the edge of the radiator is right. Now let's see, let's do right in here. Here's my hose, radiator, battery, and then thermo switch is right on that wall right there just sitting beneath it and the cable was originally ran sitting in the front of the radiator right in here with a little or I'm sorry that's the uh, uh, AC condenser the radiator is behind it but it was if you take this off you take your grill off and you take this support off you can get right to it and I had a little clamp holding it against it but I was having inconsistent readings when I was driving because the wind or whatever it was you know the temperature outside would you know it'd get a different temperature reading so I looked at some instructions and diagrams on online of that setup what it 
was really made for and what actually worked was I took so you can see the wire right here here's a overflow hose but I ran it into the hose see it right there going into the hose yeah I ran it in there and I no matter how much I tightened it I couldn't get it to stop leaking and I was like getting frustrated I was like man am I gonna have to figure out something else I don't want to have to cut the hose and do some kind of adapter but then the little foam pieces that come with it I looked on there closer on the diagram online and the, you can see it right here the edge of it that little foam see that this um, you put the you take the hose off and one side is sticky on that foam and you stick it to the actual neck and then you run this wire right across that foam and you slide your hose over it and you tighten it down on that foam and it makes a seal and I haven't had a leak out of it since and it no matter what I'm doing you know driving or you know whatever it is um, it, it's consistent readings and it turns on when it's supposed to with no issues so that worked out that's the way that I would do it and I pretty much have everything done that system is good and like I said you know I did you know my upgrades and uh, these are relay harnesses I meant to say actually um, and I got them from you can get them at any like classic car you know shop that does custom builds or something like that and it's uh, I want to say it's American Oh, American Auto Wire. That's what it is. And cooling components. So you can call that number or go online. And uh, see, it's a cooling component. CC, CI, 17 series electric fan with AC trinary switch. And it gives you a diagram of how to do it. And, you know, obviously I did mine a little different. You could buy that fan, but it's expensive. And, I, and you know, some people have a different kind of thermo switch. And I've got my own from Advance or Auto. And this gives you the diagram of how to do it. You know, and there's a different way if you run it differently, you know, on the back side, and it has two, three different kinds, and here's your maxi fuse and all that stuff, like a standard, you know, typical high-powered fan, and then you have, like, you know, it, where it kicks on with the AC and all that stuff. And then I also bought, this is that diagram I was talking about where I had an issue where it was in the wrong spot the way that the cooling piece was. This is the actual thermostat. Um, thermo switch that I used because I used it on a truck before and I kind of like it and I know the switch. See, it's a small diagram. You just got to kind of like figure it out and it's not that hard. And then, you know, it tells you what to run where and how and it has the directions. And the kit is, and I had a smaller nether harness for the AC because he asked me if it had AC and you just kind of build it that came with a diagram or he uh, wrote me one actually but see here is it's called a switch interrupter communicator and this is uh, from AutoZone Advance it's like $16 there's that probe that I was talking about that went in the, the radiator fins at the first time on my first truck it, it worked that way but this time uh, it was inconsistent so I just put it into the um, into the uh, hose with that little foam piece to seal it here I'll actually show you that it's a mess in here like I said I gotta clean up but you know. and see it came with the instructions the same I just showed you over there and here's your cooling products accessories torque flow and um, Quick. A foam piece. Uh, I might have actually robbed the foam piece out of this one to use in that one when I realized what I needed it for. And I'll, so it's not in here, but it's just a little foam piece. There's nothing to it. And uh, I will actually, um, yeah, here's your thermo switch and this little dial. And this is your bracket, like I had it built, just like this and it just mounts in there you know well actually yeah i think it is sideways like that yep and then i had it like this hanging downward in my jeep and this ran up to where i needed to the radiator and the wires just 
hang out this side, grounds. And uh, they complete a circuit and it puts, you know, uh, power to the fan. Just on the ground side is how it completes the circuit on this Jeep. You know, this particular, you know, model. Oh, and here's that diagram he drew me up for the AC thing. You know, and again, uh, American Auto Wire Relay. That's the American Auto Wire and cooling components. So you go online, find that, or your local, you know, like race shop or any of those guys where they do custom stuff to older vehicles because that's, or, or four wheel drives because that's how they, that's the stuff they have to keep around to do that. But anyway, I just wanted to do that little update. <clears throat> and let you know and um it's kind of where i'm at and I'll, I'll try to get a screenshot of the uh um that diagram that i found online for where it shows that this little foam piece goes in there it's a little bit better the way that one is it's more detailed but anyway yeah i gotta looks like she's got a little leaks coming from not being driven much you have to spray it out real good and everything. Well, there it is. You know, the fan's in. So, and all this good stuff. You know, I got those, you know, big time wires that put out a whole bunch of power for me. You know, and no issues. And run anything I needed to run if I decide to put, you know, like refrigerators or uh, anything like that, air compressors, all that stuff, it'll run it. And that's what I'm going to build this Jeep for. And I'll also do uh, try to get a picture in there of the lift kit and stuff like that that I did, even though it wasn't. You know, try not to beat up your radiator like I did mine, but it was still fine. It just looks bad from that angle, but they're mostly straight. I don't know if you see that right there. But uh, anyway. Yep, so that's where I'm at, and try to keep you guys updated, and I'll try to, I think I'm going to do some cuts and get some venting going on, things like that, and like I said, I need to seal it to keep the water out of the cab, things like that. And, uh, my light bar actually started messing up recently, you can see the water in it, so uh, I'm going to have to, see that's clear, and then all of a sudden you see all this fog in there, so that's going to had to be replaced it was a cheap one so i'll have to do a little bit you know pay a little more money for a better one but uh yeah i mean that's about it for now all right so i hope you guys uh like the video that i made and i understand that it has the black bars on the side and i wasn't you know i didn't know that it would do that i used my phone and i thought it would still be full screen somehow but it's not so i'll have to figure that out in future videos and you know, start using my GoPro, things like that, to try to get the video to be better quality and full. Um, anyway, I hope you guys still enjoyed this video. You know, I, if you watch it carefully, and even though, and kind of just deal with the way it looks with the black bars, uh, it'll still show you. And I added some pictures, things like that, and hopefully it just kind of helped out. And um, in the future videos, like I said, I'll, I'll try to make it better quality and things like that. And I'll try to do some updates of all the little projects I do. If you guys want it, just let me know. If you have questions, comment, and I'll try to keep up with them. And let you know what I did or where I got it or whatever it is. And, um, yeah, I'll just keep on with the Jeep stuff and maybe tinker with motorcycle stuff and show you some of my cooking, shooting videos, all that stuff. I'll try to start being more about the channel. I meant to do more about it. And I'm looking for more hobbies right now to stay focused. So, uh... Anyway, peace out.